Hello everyone, it's Rani from Design Plus Code. Welcome to the prototype course with Figma. In my last tutorial, I showed you how to make a maps app from scratch. So today, I will show you how to prototype and create the interactive component with my design this time. If you didn't see my previous tutorial yet, the link is on the description. Just to mention that my design is more like a custom concept has there's a mix of dark mode and glass morphism style with custom shape. The concept is to show the technique in the trick. So we will focus more on gesture interaction. So let me show you a demo of what we will do together. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to create three types of interaction, such as this car animation using after delay interaction, the icon animation using wall hovering interaction. I will show you also quickly how to create this map animation using the same technique with the after delay, but I will show you more about the time picker animation using wall hovering as well. And then I will show you how to create this drag gesture using on drag interaction. It look amazing, right? So let's get started. Figma prototyping feature allow you to create interactive flows that explore how a user may interact with your design. Prototype are a fantastic way to preview interaction and user flow, share and iterate on idea, get feedback from collaborator. So to make you work more clean and more fast, we're going to create the interactive components such as we will prototype directly on the component variant and we're going to apply to our work the animation will work automatically without creating a thousand of frame with a lot of combination of interaction so we only need just a few frame to make your work more clean and more efficient in the future before starting the prototype you will need your design, of course, and analyze how you want to interact with your design. If your design is only about the navigation to another frame, then you can prototype directly on the screen. But in my design, I have a lot of navigation screen with animation and different transition. So I prefer to prototype directly on the component separately to make my work more clean and simple without being lost after. So you have two ways how to prototype your design. If you're a beginner, it's better to start prototyping directly on the screen. If you want to learn more about the basic prototype, you can watch the previous tutorial from Sugasit. The link is down below on the description. Normally, the component should be done before creating the design, right? But in this tutorial, I will specifically show you the techniques how to prototype with variants. If you want to learn also about component and variant, the link is in the description as well. That means I'm not going to explain deeply about that, but I will simply show the technique. Let's take my design from my previous tutorial and let's begin the prototyping. We're going to start with this one. Let's bring to the another page to create the component because we need to redesign two styles because I want to make a stretch effect like this. So this is my design. I'm going to bring to another page. There we go. I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm going to detach instead. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create the component. I'm going to add the variant. And then I'm going to add this plus. So I'm going to add variant. So I have a copy of my component and the component is inside of the container. So what we need to do is rename our property. The property is the style that we describe our component. So I'm going to name state. Here is the default and the second is the variant. Such as when you play the prototype, this one is going to be the default as a main button that you will see on the prototype. When I click, this is the variant. So I'm going to redesign the second one. I'm going to make it bigger, let's say 100 of width. And I'm going to open the text label here. 
And for this icon, I'm going to rotate a little bit to the left. And by the way, this button is going to be start. And I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to open the fill color. Maybe the stroke, I'm going to decrease to 0% of opacity. So now we're going to start a prototype. So select this first button, go to the prototype mode, and then you see this blue circular. That means the prototype is ready to begin. So drag this blue arrow to the second frame. And I'm going to change for while hovering for the interaction detail. And for the animation is smart animate. And for the transition, I will keep easing this out. Or you can play with this transition like you want. For example, you can choose Jinto. So you can see the movement on this area, how it works for each transition. This one is quick. This one is bouncy. This one is slow. So it's up to you, right? So let's say Jinto. And then I'm going to drag it back to the first button. And this time I'm going to choose mouse leap. And for the transition, let's say bouncy. So when you finish the prototype, you can go to the asset and go to the local component and you can replace here or you can just, so I'm going to delete this one. Now let's play the prototype and click on this present view. So it looks like that. But I don't like the bouncy, I'm going to change. I'm going to choose the normal, easy is out for each. So let's see. Yeah, I prefer this one. So it's very helpful to create with the interactive component. Here I have one screen and when I click on the prototype, I have all the animation inside of one frame. So that's why I prefer to create the interactive component directly and then apply on the design to make it more simple and clean, right? So all my component is on this page and my design, I have only one frame and all the animation is played inside of one screen. It's amazing, right? So if you are able to create one prototype, you will be able to do for the rest of the button. It's the same technique, right? All you need to do is copy the same component and change the text and the icon. That's it. So next, we're going to jump to the car animation. Now let's create this car animation using after delay. You will see it's very easy, nothing complicated. So here's the design. We're going to copy this layer and we're going to bring it to the component page. So let's redesign this image. Here's the main image. So let's redesign this Tesla first. I'm going to decrease this size of the Tesla. So I'm going to decrease a little bit like this and then bring at the corner and I'm going to rotate a little bit like this. I can even put at the right a little bit to high. So my first image is done. So let's create the component. We're going to do the same technique, add a property, add a variant on the property panel and select variant. Then we're going to add variant. This time, I'm going to increase the Tesla. I'm going to put it back to the zero degree. And then I'm going to increase the size. So press K on your keyboard shortcut, K. So you will see two arrows appear. Then I'm going to resize it back and put at the middle a little bit, something like this. Now let's prototype. Select the frame, go to the prototype tab. Let's drag this connection node and bring to the second frame. We're going to select after delay to create an animation right away. So the animation will play automatically when you start the presentation. For the delay, I will put 100 milliseconds because I want the animation start fast. And for the animation is smart animate, the transition, I will keep it like that is in is out and for the duration i will put 2000 milliseconds because i want the animation play slowly so i only need to prototype from here to here that's it if you want to play animation with infinite mode what you need to do is copy this component and bring to your design i'm going to replace so shift option command v the new layer is replaced now let's play the button presentation. 
See, let's try again. I'm going to fix the road a little bit. So go back to the component. So maybe let's hide the corner here. And I'm going to bring this down a little bit. Maybe like this. So let's see how it looks like. Yeah, it's better. Maybe I'm going to put at the top a little bit because the Tesla is too hiding. So maybe it's not the similar as my preview um, presentation. I just show you how the animation works. So that's it. You can play however you want. You can play with the, the position. You can even hide a little bit. Maybe make it bigger, the row. Let's see how it looks like. So this is the simple way how to create the car animation. With After Delay, you can animate whatever you want for your presentation. If you want the animation play forever, you can just prototype it back. So bring the connection node to the first frame and click on After Delay and doing the same thing. And let's see what is going to happen. The animation will play infinitely like this one. The animation is done. It's very simple as that. Using only After Delay and you play with the number of the duration. So next we're going to animate. The icon is going to be easy as well. So let's begin. Now we're going to animate the icon from the tab bar. I will show you the technique with one icon and you will be able to do for the rest of the icon. All right, don't worry. I will put all the demo on my Figma file that you can reuse. Let's animate this bell icon. So I'm going to copy and bring to another file. So here is the demo of my component. I'm going to bring it here. So let's detach and stand to start from scratch. First, you need to plan how you want to animate this and then you can organize the design. Let's duplicate the bell icon two more time or you can have more depending on how you want to animate that. So I'm going to duplicate two more. For the opening interaction, I'm going to use while hovering and I'm going to use mouse leave as the close interaction. That means for the first icon, I will use while hovering interaction and for the last icon, this one, I will use mouse leave as the close interaction. Let me give you an example. When I'm hovering this icon, the icon is moving and when I leave my mouse, it's come back to the start icon for the first icon is going to start like this to this then it will finish back to start icon so you have to know how you want to organize the animation now let's create the multiple component so select the three icons and go to the component at the top then click on create component set all you need to do is rename your property and rename the variant so for the first one, it's going to be default. And the second, I'm going to name variant 2. And for the third icon, I'm going to name variant 3. For the first icon, it's already set to default. So you need to keep like this. For the variant, we're going to change the design, such as changing the position. For example, the second icon, I'm going to rotate to the left. Let's select the icon frame and rotate to the left a little bit like this. And of course, you can change the color and you can play with this circle and bring at the top a little bit like this. And for this one, I'm going to rotate to the right and bring to the top like this. So for this one, I'm going to change the color for white. And then I'm going to add the stroke and I'm going to add this circle. Okay. Now let's prototype together. Select this first icon and go to the prototype tab. So drag the connection node to the second frame. And for the interaction, we're going to choose while hovering. And the animation is already smart animate. So for the first and the third icon, I'm going to select gentle. Or you can play with all the transition as you want. So you can see this example on this area. You can change for quick, bouncy, slow, or you can custom your transition. So for the first icon, I'm going to select the gentle. And for the millisecond, I'm going to keep with 100 millisecond. 
So the second icon drag to the third icon. Same thing while hovering. It's going to be bouncy this time. So you can play with the transition as you want. Okay. For the last one, I'm going to drag to the first. So I want to start from this. And then when the mouse leave, it will finish to this icon. So I'm going to select Gento again. Now let's change the component and let's see if it's work. So I'm going to go to the tab bar and I'm going to change the component. So select shift option command V. The component is changed. So let's review the presentation. So it's bouncy. I can play with the duration a little bit. It's still a little bit too long. So let's go back. For the last icon, I'm going to decrease the duration a little bit. Let's say 500. So let's see how it look like. Yeah, it's a little bit too slow. So this is an example. So you can do the same technique for this icon. So the first icon start like this and then the transition, you can play with the design. And then when the mouse leave, the transition will bring back to this default icon like this. So it's not complicated, right? Now let's jump to the map section. However, I'm not going to show you the whole animation because it's the same technique as the car animation using after delay as well. But the difference is the rotation. So I'm going to show you quickly this rotation technique and I will show you more about the time picker animation using while hovering interaction. So how the number change at the same time. So let's see how we do this. How did I create this time picker animation? First thing you need to do is put text label inside of the frame. So when I animate, we can see the number change inside the frame like this. So on my map animation, I use after delay interaction because I want to animate two elements at the same time. That's why I use after delay, but I have another version that you can try to practice. This time I'm going to choose while hovering interaction and mouse leave interaction. Let's start from scratch. First, you need to create a frame 28 by 28 pixel. So press A on your keyboard shortcut and create 28 by 28 pixel. I'm going to decrease the opacity because I don't see anything for now. Then I'm going to add a number, let's say five and center. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add the following numbers in the same text label. So press enter or return from your keyboard shortcut and write the next digit in reverse direction until you get number zero. There you go. I'm going to put it back. So my first frame is done. Now let's duplicate the same frame. So I'm going to write one. So duplicate or you can just option and drag. And this time I'm going to reverse. You can move like this or you can just align bottom to make it fast. There you go. So to make your text label consistent and straight, you can use the pixel grid or you can use the ruler. So I'm going to move this zero like this. And now we're going to prototype to see how it looks like. I'm going to select the first frame and prototype, drag the connection node to the second frame. And I'm going to choose while hovering interaction. And for the duration, I'm going to put 2000 milliseconds to make the movement slowly a little bit. So I'm going to drag it back to the first frame. This time is going to be mouse leave. And for the rest is the same thing. And I'm going to chain for flow one because I want to start from this frame. So let's see. So if I hover my mouse, the number change if my mouse leave the number come back. So this is another way how to prototype the time picker. Oh, I have the another version with the date. So for example, we are May 1st and it's going to change to May 5th. So yeah, this is another way how to prototype the time picker. But on my map animation, I use after delete because I animate the map and the time picker in the same time. All right. So if you know how to create the time picker, you can apply on your design and see how it looks like. So the time picker is done. Next, we're going 
to do the map animation. How did I create this map animation? It's very simple as that. First thing you need to do is duplicate the frame and then you change the position of each line. So for each line, you need to change the number and the position. For example, from this one to this one, I move the current location. I go to the top and then I rotate. I move to the top again. I rotate to the left. See, and then I move the current location to the top. And while I change the position with the rotation, I change the number from my time picker. So my time picker, how I did, I put the number on the frame. And then I just move like this for each frame. And for the animation, I use after delay for all the frame. Let me give you a demo. We're going to create another one. I am going to create only three frames to show you how I did that. So let's start from this screen. More simple. I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to detach instance to create from start. For example, my animation starts from here, right? Let's duplicate the screen. So for the second screen, I want to change the position. Normally, when you start the navigation, you will see the current location will turn in the same time and follow the road. So we're going to do the same thing. So such as I'm going to select all the elements that I want to move except the current location. So rotate everything except the current location icon. So rotate and make sure to bring and fit the, the line. So I'm going to go over there. It's supposed to move, right? And then you can change the number. But normally from here to here, it's not supposed to change too much. But I'm just going to show you. And then for the number, you can move to the one minute like this and change the kilometer in the same time. So something like this. And then we're going to put a type from here to here. Click on after delay, smart animate, easy and now. And for the after delay, I want the animation start right now. So you can put like one millisecond. And for the duration, I will put 1000 millisecond to make the movement very smooth, not too fast, not too, too slow. And then do the same thing, duplicate the third screen. And the third screen, we're going to rotate back, select all the layer except the current location. The current lo location should be always straight. I'm going to put it there. And then I'm going to move this current location. I'm going to go to the top like this. And I'm going to edit the, the, the stroke like this. Do the same thing for the blur stroke. It should be something like this. And you can also change the number and go to the top. So you do the same thing. Put a type in this frame. And the interaction is going to be after delay. I'm going to keep the same thing. So for the after delay is going to be one millisecond. So let's see how it looks like for the moment. So let's see the prototype. Okay. I can continue the prototype. Maybe another one. I'm going to put one more. So I'm going to pick this current location icon and go to the top and change the color like this and i'm going to prototype another one so after delay 100 millisecond for the after delay and the duration 1000 so let's see again oh i forget to change the number maybe let's i'm going to change for two i'm going to change if you're not sure you can take the ruler to make it strict okay there you go let's see again So yeah, this is how we create the map animation. So it's cool, right? It's very easy to make an animation. You can just change the position. You can rotate the element. You can play, yeah, you know, and you can animate two elements at the same time. Now let's create this hover effect on this nav bar buttons using while hovering and leave mouse. So we're going to do the same thing, take the design, create the component, add variant, then prototype. I'm going to just copy paste from this one and I'm going to start from scratch. Let's detach and stance. So here is my left button for the top navigation bar. 
So we're going to create a component first, and then we're going to add the variant. There we go. And then click on the plus to copy the variant too. So for the second variant, we're going to redesign the style. So for the second variant, I'm going to take up the fill color and I'm going to add the stroke instead. So for the stroke, it's going to be solid color with white color. I'm going to decrease the opacity to 50% and I'm going to add a blending mode to overlay like this. And then to create like a neon light effect, I'm going to add another stroke and add the blur. So I'm going to duplicate this layer. So Command D, take the second layer and we're going to add linear gradient instead with three gradient. And for the color, it's going to be this blue for all of the three color. But for the top and bottom, it's going to be 4% opacity. Same thing for this one, 4%. And for the middle, it's going to be 50%. I'm going to add the layer blur to 10 like this. And the opacity is going to be 80. And for the line stroke, it's going to be 2. So let's play a little bit with the color like this maybe. Next, we're going to push the icon to the right a little bit to make a bouncing effect. So we're going to push around 10 pixels. But for the shortcut, you can shift right arrow from your keyboard and push to one pixel like this. This is the fast version instead of go manually to 10 pixels. So to make it fast, you can just shift and push one pixel. That's it. Now let's prototype. So go to the prototype tab, click the first variant and drag the connection node to the second variant. Then select the wall hovering, smart anime, and normally the interaction detail is already set easing in sound and 300 millisecond by default. So I'm going to keep like that. And I'm going to drag back to the first variant and this time it's going to be mouse leaf. Now let's go back to my design and I'm going to go to my asset and go to the local component that I just created. And I'm going to duplicate the same component and let's align right. But this time I'm going to flip horizontal like this and I'm going to change my icon or my SF symbol and let's play the presentation view. Here we go. So it look like a bouncing effect, right? Or I have the second version that you can create for the button. If you have the setting icon, what I did is I rotate to minus 50 degrees. So let's see. With the same technique, I only rotate the icon. That's it. So this one, I push the icon to the right. And for this one, I just rotate and push to the left. So this is the simple way how to animate the custom buttons that you can customize yourself on your own style to make original animation. Now let's do this drag gesture using drag interaction to create a kind of drag back and forth effect. But before that, we're going to animate this mileage chart using mouse leap interaction first. So let's begin. So I'm going to copy this component and start from scratch for you. So right click, I'm going to detach instance and I'm going to put it back with the component. So select and create component. I'm going to create the variant to so go to the property panel on the right side. So click on the plus and variant. Then I'm going to add the variant. For the second one, I, I want to animate the chart here on the blue section. So what I'm going to do, I just put it at the top completely and I'm going to change the color style on the second variant. So I'm going to put primary color on the 20 kilometer. So I'm going to select to primary and this one I'm going to select secondary. There you go. Now let's prototype. So select the first frame and then go to the prototype tab. You will see this connection node is ready. So let's drag to the second frame. For the interaction, I'm going to choose mouse leaf. And for this animation is smart animate. And for the transition, I'm going to keep ease in and out. And for the duration, I'm going to set 800 milliseconds. And then that's it. Next, I'm going to copy this component and apply on my design 
So when I want to create a draggable prototype, the animation will play inside of this frame. Let's see. So the animation is playing inside of this frame. Now we're going to create this drag gesture between the two elements. So once the component is applied in this element, now let's group the two elements together inside a frame. So you can right click frames selection or option command G from your keyboard shortcut. So for the width, I'm going to drag to the left to fit with the screen edge, such as 390 like this. And this one is going to hide. So I'm going to name list. And for the spacing between, I'm going to set 20 like this. Let's try to put inside of the frame. So let's center and let's put the spacing 20. So there we go. This is going my first frame. And let's duplicate the screen. There you go. For the mileage chart, I'm going to resize manually and let's lock the constraint proportion. Let's drag manually until I got 220 and align vertical center again. And we're going to add the blur effect. So for the layer blur, I'm going to set to 10, make a blurred effect. And for the second screen, we're going to do the same thing. So let's drag a little bit like this. So for this one, let's center, make it center everywhere. And from the two elements, I'm going to reside the spacing, so 20. So now for this one, I'm going to do the same thing, drag until I got 220. There you go. And let's center again. And we're going to add a blur effect. Do the same thing. We're going to set it 10. Now let's prototype. Select this frame, prototype, drag to the second screen. And we're going to select on drag, smart image, ease in and out. And for the duration, it's going to be 400. And let's drag back to the first screen. Same thing, on drag in the same transition. Now let's play the present view. So let's drag this frame. Here I have my second element with this smiley chart animation in the same time. See, I have a bug a little bit here. So the drag gesture is done. What I need to do is complete the design together. So here is my final design. We start with the list and then we're going to add the segment control. So I'm going to copy and paste on my second frame. Same thing, I'm going to copy this bottom sheet and apply on my design. So from my list and the segment control, I'm going to set the spacing between to 20. There you go. And I'm going to delete my sample. I don't need that anymore. Okay. So I'm going to option and drag to duplicate. All I need to do for now, I'm going to copy from this frame and I'm going to apply. So shift option command V and I'm going to change this light effect. So when I drag, the trip is going to change to the mileage section. So that's mean I'm going to change the line with the glow effect. So let's drag this one, select the two line and then shift plus right arrow and drag to the right. So it's going to be like this. So I'm going to start over to show you because I changed the frame and I lost the prototype. So let's prototype the trip element to the second screen so for the interaction it's going to be on drag transition easy and now duration 400 millisecond i'm going to drag this one back this chart to the first screen so on drag i keep the same thing so let's play the preview presentation so let's drag to the second element and the light neon effect change in the same time when i drag see go back before to create the final components separately, we need to group all the elements inside of one frame first. So what I did is I select all the layer that I need and add the frame and put inside of this frame. So you can just select and right click add frame selection. I already added frame, so I'm going to name drag gesture. 
So same thing for this one. When the group selection is done, we can now take off from the screen. I'm going to drag down. Now I'm going to create the component set. So select the two elements, go to the component, create component set. So my two variants are inside of this container component. So now let's prototype again, because when you create the component, you lose your prototype. Normally you should create a component variant first and then prototype after and then apply to your design. But earlier, I just wanted to show you how the prototype looks like on the screen. So we're going to prototype again, take the list, go to the prototype, drag the connection node to the second frame and on drag interaction for the animation is more animate, transition is in and out, duration 400 milliseconds. Let's drag the smiley chart frame to the first variant. Let's drag back to the first variant. So the same thing on drag. We can now apply the component to the design. I'm going to go to my asset and drag my component directly on my design. And there you go. Now let's see the prototype. So let's drag. So when I drag the light effect on the segment control change, and this animation plays at the same time. So inside of this tree frame, I have a bunch of prototyping inside of the component. And then I only have three screen. So there you go. My work, it looks very clean and simple. So all of the screen have the animation because I already prototype inside of the component variant. So that's pretty it. So in summary, we just created the three type of interactions such as while hovering, on drag, and after delay that we prototype it inside of a bunch of components with only three screen at the final presentation that it looks really clean. It's not amazing guy? So you can duplicate again the same Figma file as my map app from my previous tutorial and you can discover each animation separately if you want to focus on one of the animation specifically, like the buttons, tab bar, bottom sheet, timeline, nav bar, you can just discover each animation and I put all the interaction detail already for you. Now go ahead and create your own animation. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it can be useful for you. So to see more content from the team, Please like and subscribe. Thank you and see you soon.